Howdy folks. Last Thursday we talked a little bit more about the T-Rex blade, which is the titanium carbide oscillating saw blades that will go through just about anything. They're from a company called Tulin. They sent me something new to take a look at, and it's a very inexpensive set, but it's a, something really nice to have. If you're a woodworker, countersink bit set. Nice. We're going to get into it. Yes, right now. Yeah. Yep, like I said, countersink bits. There's something um, uh, in, inherent when you're doing woodworking. A lot of times you'll need countersink bits to hide the screw or at least bury the screw down underneath a profile. And this is an inexpensive set, but it's made by some people that make some really good quality stuff. These are on sale for like six and a half dollars or something for this set of seven piece plus the Allen wrench. And I'm just gonna take a look at the sizes because uh, we'll go to the biggest size here first. And I think that's, I'm gonna put the tape measure on that so we can scale that up, but that's what I thought. Yeah, it's, that's a half inch. And that's what I was thinking it was. And the same with this one here. We'll just check and see if that's a half inch. I believe it is. And that is again showing yeah, half inch size. So we've got countersink bits. You got three sizes here. I believe that's half. This is probably three eighths, but again, we'll put it on the ruler and just take a quick check and sure enough, yep, three eighths. And then this should be the quarter inch size. So you get some real basic uh, sizes here. Yep, quarter inch. And then you also have the full, you know, the full one where you have the countersink bit with a Allen key lock and you have your drill bit. Now the drill bit is a good quality wood bit with the centering on it. So you can get a nice straight start to where you're gonna be. And again, when you look at these bits, you'll see how the blade is cut back like this. This kind of allows you to monitor it. A lot of times I will take a magic marker or something and make a little black line here someplace if I need the countersink bit. You know, it has to be down below the wood surface, of, of course, you know, to hide the screws or to keep the screws away from the rest of the work going on. So nice, really nice little set. And for the money, I just think you can't beat it. I will provide a link in the description below where you can find this set for on sale for about six and a half dollars right now. I'm not sure about uh, shipping and that sort of thing, uh, but uh, we got this set in right away. So hopefully they're still in stock by the time you get there and they're not sold out or some crazy thing. But it also comes with the little Allen key in the kit here and a nice little case. What a great little set. And you have the, the two different types of countersinking they might do. Let's take a piece of wood and uh, countersink for a screw and just have a look and see what kind of a job it does. Uh, we'll do it right here over here on the wood bench with uh, a handheld drill and uh, just check it all out. So one of the first things we're going to be doing is pick a, in this case, a small, the smallest size they have here for this type of, this is a, actually a dock or deck screw, but uh, it has that nice, you know, head on it that I want to sort of duplicate in my countersink. So you can kind of get an idea as to, you know, how that's going to look, how that'll turn out. And we're just going to drill it into a piece of half inch pine board here or something. Make sure your drill is nice and tight. <clears throat> here we go. And I'm just going to drill in. Interesting. Now, let's see how how that did. Boy, I can smell the pine <laughs> in here. And we'll get the old let's see screw and drop the screw down. And there the screw is right just below the wood, so that it's exactly what you want. You want a countersunk screw. There's a countersunk screw. And we'll take that back out. Yeah. But that's the general idea. It's 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 you know if you're old school boy we used to we used to do a lot of these now this one takes more pressure i've noticed than some because of the way that the chip out is here where it feeds the chips and stuff so you don't go down through fast so it's not high speed that way but quality wise it doesn't it looks like it does a beautiful job i mean i love the the love the finish in there it looks really good so yeah great set cheap price uh, link below and I'm on it and let's move on to the next thing. Hey, kind of having a busy day here today. Um, <sighs> power's been going out around the house quite a bit and it would be nice to have standby power or something and it's expensive, like solar would be awesome. I'm experimenting with some solar stuff right now so I might show you something to do with that at this point, but 
Uh, our friends at Gulu, who make that really awesome car jumper for the battery, also make a power pack. Yeah, so for RVing, camping, hiking, boating, uh, anytime you're away from the house, or if the house is without power and you need AC, Gulu has you covered. Yeah, they make a power pack. It's a 100 watt power pack, and we're going to show that today. And I'm going to show you some various applications because uh, it's not just for 12 volt. It also it's also big and heavy, which you know is good. <laughs> you know, big and heavy. It's got to be a good one, right? <laughs> Get it out of the box here, and here she be. And she comes with a lot of features. This is a Gulu Power Pack 100 watt. It has some interesting specifications, and I think right now we should be. Let's see. I'll turn it. Yeah, 100% charged. So she's full. And the first thing you can do is you can plug this in, which is a uh, inverter. It also has USB, and it has the newer USB style, like 2.0. But it also has the new USB. What was that? USB 3.0 or Thunderbolt? Uh, yeah, the new, the new whatever it is, USB cable. Boy, I wish they hadn't done this. Mm, but everybody, the computer world. Oh, jeez. Thank you, Apple, or whoever did that. Uh, also, you can plug your cell phone, that sort of thing, in here and charge it up. But you can also run up to 100 watts of AC, which means you can plug in a portable radio or something else that uses, or even an adopter to use as something else. If it uses household current AC, you've got an outlet here, which even has a ground on it, so you won't have a problem fighting with a you know weird plug thing or something. And it also has this little feature where you know it could be straight up or it can be down like that. And it plugs into the side of the unit here. And it has, it also has the big cigarette lighter plug on the back side of it. Now this is a big uh, lithium battery type system. So you can plug that in, set it up like that. The little blue light is on. And now, I'll see if I can show you that to you. Yep. Uh, now I can plug a AC item in or a power adopter to if I have a specialty item that I want to charge up. I can run it off the AC off of this. Pretty cool. Gulu makes some really good battery chargers. So when I heard they had the power pack, I says, wow, I would love to see that. And uh, the gang over at Gulu said, hey, you know what? We're going to send you one. And so you can, you know, show everybody what it looks like. It also comes with a clip, which is kind of like one of those carabine, carabiner type, uh, like carabine type clips. So you can uh, hook this on. Uh, Put it on with your uh, backpack or camping, like so again, whatever you're doing. Also try to set this up to see if we could charge USB off of a solar pack. And there was a problem with that. And the problem was that the solar panel system, the USB is kind of weak, so it wasn't doing very well. But if you had a power inverter, which I do not have on the system right now, if you had that, they also have USB on there. And you'd be able to plug this into that to charge this up from solar. So uh, if you were taking a little bit of, you know, some solar panels, a uh, controller, power inverter, lithium battery, whatever system out with you, you could also add this in there to charge it up. We were trying to figure out a way if we could just directly charge from a solar package, and it's just, it's not doable. Technically, yeah, you're, you're a little bit out of, out of your water there. It does come with the two different types of USB connections, the older, the old, good old style that we all, you know, grew up and loved. And also, of course, with the, the new style uh, for uh, charging. I charged it uh, when it first came in, brought it up to 100%. And it's been sitting on the bench ever since. It's been sitting for days, and it's still at 100%. So it's, it's doing a nice job of holding, which, again, I've always loved the quality of the Gulu. Gulu seems like their stuff is always pretty darn good stuff. This power thing uh, fascinated me because I was thinking, it's, you know, there's so many different applications with AC for adopters or other specialty things where it'd be nice to have some kind of a plug, especially when you're RV, camping, hiking, boating, uh, anytime you're remote, or if the house power goes off uh, and you might need to plug something in to use, such as maybe even a small television or uh, maybe you know something like that, you might be able to use this and that would be really cool because you have that AC power right there. And in this day and age, uh, <clears throat> electricity doesn't seem to be as uh, stable as it used to be. <laughs> yeah. So having something like this for backup is, it just it's not just camping or RVing, it's almost like for everything around the house too. You could have this on standby. Uh, so 
let's go to the solar package and I'll show you what happened or what went what went wrong and, and why don't do this <laughs> yeah. so the experiment was basically of a, a solar one single solar panel up here and a uh, solar package that's a controller very inexpensive controller but the USBs on these are like 0.2 of an amp rated so that's a little bit too light uh, the idea was to plug the Gulu into this and just charge it up and see if we could portably charge a Gulu up and then even have AC power afterwards. Uh, it was a bit of a failure because this couldn't handle it, so it would just kick the whole system off. But the um, really the proper way to do that would be to go to a battery with a office uh, system and then on the battery side have a uh, inverter a proper power inverter that has USB that's rated for like five amps or something and that you could plug your Gulu into so at that point but you'd need the four uh, the four parts of a, a solar system as opposed to just the two pieces I've got showing here but uh, yeah that was an experiment and it screwed up but it is what it is we learned a link will be provided in the description below where you can find this Gulu power pack interesting uh, supported charging devices I'm just going to throw this out at you because there's, there's quite actually there's a pretty good list here uh, of ideas but uh, smartphone of course tablets uh, smart watches digital cameras e-readers uh, drones routers would be interesting you could pick the internet back up while your house is you know losing power or something uh, also the uh, mini or uh, mini refrigerators I don't have too much comment on that because yeah you, you're gonna have to have a small one in order to get away with it but you could do it you know laptop uh, it says displays and then it says electrical appliances and that's sort of pretty broad wide open as to what that is because you got to remember this is only 100 watts and there's a lot of things like a coffee maker is going to exceed that but there's a lot of appliances that you could plug in and different types of lighting fixtures and things so it's kind of like emergency power also great for the camping rv and you know you know the rest so hey we got a contest today but we had to talk about a couple tools because we've We've got quite a backlog, so we're trying to, you know, get some stuff knocked out here. And uh, we're going to go over to the draw for five of the T-Rex oscillating blades. Yes. I'll close all this up, go find a cowboy hat, and let's clean this up, and let's get on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're back. And we had talked about this. Somebody suggested using a coffee can. I kind of like the cowboy hat idea, but eh, we'll do the, we'll just do a coffee can this week. I just happen to have one of those... Uh, the Maxwell House, yeah, no sponsor, no relationship to this company whatsoever, and it's, uh, I think it's French roast, as a matter of fact. Oh, oh bonjour. All right, we're going to get all the tickets. There's quite a few, and we'll throw them in a coffee can, and hmm, let's put the lid on and really shake them up. <laughs> we'll do this, and yes, five of the T-Rex blades is going out to subscribers. I'd love to hear comments uh, after you get the blade, if you use it for something or you really like it. Or something. I'd love to hear some comments afterwards. And uh, when we do a show next week or something, I'd love to get at that point, after you get your blade, of course, uh, we'd love to hear about it. We'll just see, you know, what do you think? I, I'll tell you, I think that's, the, that's my blade now. The rest of the blades that come with these uh, oscillating saws, you know, don't even bother. So. Let's pull somebody out of the hat here. I'm going to mix them up some more. Let's get, there's a big one right there. What's this? Lance in Columbus, Indiana. Hey, you got the first one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, we're giving five away, so cross your fingers and see if it's you. What do we got here? Keith in Orange City. Keith, you've, you've won before, but you know what? You're getting... The T-Rex, you know, you're getting the blade there, Keith, so cool. I don't know what Keith got from us before, but he got something. <laughs> Scott in Bountiful, Utah. Wow, cool. I didn't think we were, I don't remember seeing anybody from Utah in that list, but there was a lot of people from Texas, so we'll see, but oop, oop, dropped one here. Uh, what do we got here? Joseph in Springdale, Arkansas. I think he's gotten something too, but anyways, Joe, you got your T-Rex blade. And we'll put this one back in because it fell out of there. And last but not least, let's see if we can find one more buggered up here. Oh yeah, there we go. And Frank in, ah, Rocheron, Texas. You getting a 
blade as well, Frank. Congratulations, you guys, and thanks so much for entering the contest this week. And let's uh, let's just say, want to hear about this and see if you like those blades. Those things, I think they're pretty damn cool. Let's get this cleaned up, and congratulations to those five winners. And let's see what we got going on for. Huh, got a giveaway for next week. So when we come back, I got to clean this mess up. All right. All right, that was a long break. Okay, next week, next Thursday, we have a draw. <laughs> and we're giving away the top test. I call it the sniff foam meter, but it's the top test gas leak detector meter. And it's really cool. We did a show about it uh, a couple weeks ago. And again, I'll provide a link in the show below where uh, any of the products that we're on today will, will be there for anyone that's interested. But uh, next Thursday, we're giving the top test gas leak detector way and to get in on that show just send an email to ctrewards at gmx.com uh, one entry per household the uh, let's give it the code name here let's see subject line or email should be gas <laughs> g-a-s yeah gas <laughs> and then in the email the body of the email just like you're doing a postal return just your name and address your proper address uh, I'm saying that again because we got a number of entries where there was just a name or a name with just a town uh, or city that they lived in. Yeah. And those get deleted. They don't get, they don't go in the uh, tickets, okay? So, yeah. And uh, that's a shame. I hate to see that because I don't know what happened or what's wrong at the other end or whether they just thought that's all they had to do to get in or something. But no, you've got to get full name, full address, including your zip code, and uh, that way when we pull the tickets, we can actually use your ticket to print the mailer that's going to mail whatever the prize is to your door. And that gives the viewers, you know, just makes it easier for us to, and gets the viewers the t something that comes off of this show. So, next week we've got some really cool stuff here today that uh, we will be getting into next week that uh, came in. Wow, yeah. Uh, in the meantime, I want to thank everyone for entering the contest. Please enter the contest. And thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell so you don't miss a giveaway when we're giving stuff away. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Over. <laughs>